Hey everybody, Adam Savage. Uh, a few months ago in the tested inbox, we received an email from Maeve here asking us to come to Charlestown, West Virginia to the National Park Service Museum Conservation Lab. And we said yes right away. Maeve, thank you so much for sending that yeah, email. Thank you for coming. Daisy, how are you? Hi. Um, so we're here, tell me what we are looking at. I was gonna say it's a flag, but then I see the, the V and I'm like, is there a different name for that? It's still a flag. Okay. It's, um, it's General Meade's headquarters flag from uh, 1864, I believe. Um, and it was only his flag for a month um, because it used to be purple. It used to be like very, very purple. Um, and so at one point, like maybe like two weeks after he made it his flag, um, Grant apparently saw it and said, What's this? Is Imperial Caesar anywhere about here? And um, within a couple weeks, Meade had taken this flag down and replaced it with a normal flag. So it's like it's kind of a very short-lived flag. They brought it back eventually, um, which like if you see this like kind of ghost border yeah. on it, that would have been um, from after Lincoln's assassination. All of the colors were kind of ordered to be in mourning. So there was like a black. Uh, black border added and then taken off again. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so this is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a really the, strange story. Within the history of textiles, purple has mm -hmm. a deep and rich history. It was illegal to have purple yeah. in your garments at some points in history. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love the idea of Grant taking umbrage yeah, at just, the kingly. <laughs> yeah, just poking at him a little bit. I love it. Is this what I see over here, an example of its original color? Yeah, so this is kind of the closest that we were able to get from our um, like our materials that we had already dyed. So this is silk crepeline. Oh, wow. Um, and and so you dyed it. I have not dyed that, oh, but okay. for the final thing, I'll be doing some dyeing to get it the exact right shade. So it'll be an overlay on top of this because as you can see, like this is a very delicate um, silk. Yeah. And we're going to be doing a pressure mount on it. And so we don't want any issues with static because we're going to have plexi like directly pressed up against it so we don't have to stitch through it. Ah. So we're going to use this as like a, a barrier so we don't have any of the silk or any of the paint like Touching lifting any, up uh, onto the plexi with the static. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but uh, we can also use it as an opportunity to bring back a little bit of the purple. That is really cool because when mm -hmm. I looked at it, I thought, oh, I guess that must have been the lowest fold. Yeah. Right, it looked like mm -hmm. it was just an actual purple stain. Yeah, there are some places that were folded where you can see a little bit of the purple like right in there. Oh yeah. And there's a good reference, the ties on the yeah, side. Yeah, the ties and have been along the mm -hmm. hem here that oh, were yeah. kind of protected. Yeah. Oh, if I was his boss, I would have been pissed off about that color. <laughs> mm -hmm. Too flashy. Yeah, it's like, it's very purple. That is super <laughs> royal. Yeah. No, I, mean, I can totally see Grant's point. This is fascinating to see the hand, how, how hand painted it actually mm -hmm. is. And it's painted on both sides. I mean, there's something in its, uh, in the, in the the sort of simple crudeness of the lines, I feel uh, I see an artist. You know, mm -hmm. I see a hand to it. You said this is originally made out of silk, mm -hmm. um, and does silk pre present interesting conservation problems? Yes, very, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> Thank you for um, asking. Yeah. <laughs> when so. it ages, it has a tendency to um, we call it shattering, and it'll just like it just. It wants to turn back into dust is what wow. it wants to do. And so you'll see like this sort of damage is kind of very. It's almost like foxing or is that the right term? For not quite. Like it, it breaks mostly along like the the lines of the weave. Okay. Um, it just like the all the strength in the fiber just kind of leaves. Um, polymer chains just mm -hmm. jump. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So that's. Probably why it was glued to this board. That's what has happened in the past. Oh my God, it was glued to the board. Yes. Yeah. So you yeah. can't remove it or we, can you? We have. Oh, you have. Yeah, oh Daisy God. and I have been, we have it now on a piece oh. of mylar so we can lift it a little bit. How, that seems crazy. Yeah, it, it and was And this is crazy. the board it was on. Yeah, so super low quality board. The <sighs> the acid leaching from this board definitely had something to do with, with the state you see it in now. So sometimes you would, I would imagine in your, dis, in your discussions with the past, you're like, 
you graceless yeah. idiots. <laughs> well, it's funny. We talk a lot about that in conservation because things like scotch tape will be found on like books, but a lot of times the scotch tape saves the thing, you really? know? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if not for the scotch tape, it would have been dust years ago. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, we understand why mm -hmm. they glued this thing to right. this board. Right. I mean, I, I guess we understand why the yeah. board is not <laughs> an excellent quality. We'll forgive that. But yeah. um, it let us still have this flag. Yeah, it may have become dust a long time ago if right. they hadn't done it. Whereas if but, they hadn't done that mm -hmm. destructive <laughs> saving, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's amazing. <laughs> um, was it glued all the way across or was it edge glued? Just the edges and then you can see these are brush strokes from the glue. This, oh, wow. Um, kind of haphazardly done a little bit. We were able to analyze the glue. Maeve took a small sample and uh, ran it through one of our pieces of analytical equipment here. Um, that's called the FTIR, which you ready for some big words? Yeah. Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Yes. Um, and with our instrument, we have an ATR crystal, which is an attenuated total reflectance crystal. Okay. So all of those things basically mean um, that a bit of infrared light gets shot into whatever sample you're placing on the crystal window. And based on what light bounces back and what is absorbed, it um, can analyze the, the bonds, like the molecular bonds, and kind of narrow down uh, what material might, you might be looking at. So mostly like organics, polymers, that right, kind of right. thing. Um, so uh, drum roll, we were able to see that um, this was characterized as basically uh, broadly a natural resin, mm -hmm. um, but what came up as the first hit because um, the it, it produces a spectra from the amount of light that right. is absorbed and bounces back, and it um, it compares it against a library of other spectra mm -hmm. of known materials. Yeah. So it has all these things stored in the computer that it kind of measures your unknown against. And what bounced back as the top result is uh, a dental resin uh, <laughs> that- Like an acrylic resin? Uh, no, or natural, no? Oh, natural okay. like plant material resin um, that's called copalite. Yeah. Um, which indicated to us that like the, the base of that word being copal, uh, which is a natural resin varnish like Damar, uh, Sandorak. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So that's that to to the best guess of our technology and us. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what they slathered this thing with. Yeah. Um, does that give you hints about ways to perhaps treat the fabric that was in contact with the glue to restore or to at least uh, stop its deterioration? Mm -hmm. So we um, like using that knowledge and then um, we did some like small scale like solvent tests mm -hmm. on it to see what it would move in um, and found ethanol and isopropyl were the most the most effective at that. So that's what we used to lift it up. But we have a couple spots on here. You can see here where we had like just a little bit too much in contact with it and it's right. created this tide line and it has moved. So I'm really hopeful that now that it's up, we can maybe put like a suction platen underneath it and like drop ethanol onto it and like pull out oh, wow. the remaining glue. And hopefully that'll reduce some of these stains that are were never part of the original right. thing, especially that X by the Eagles head. That <laughs> one annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Mm -hmm. It's also such a human thing. You feel someone with a brush. Yeah, no, you can just like, you can see it. You can yeah, see it happening, yeah, with, like afternoon. the movement. Yeah. And they went and made a sandwich later. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the color, uh, I would imagine this isn't uh, uh, something for you guys every time because color is so subjective mm -hmm. and trying to unpack how things change over time. Um, what is that process like? Obviously, you're dye different samples, but do you guys like pull the room? Do you have experts <laughs> in how color changes over time? We definitely pull the room. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like kind of just bring people in and be like, so what do you think about this color? Right. Yeah. For this guy, I made a couple mock-ups of different background colors that we could use because this is not a color that's doing anything for right. this flag. Um, so the park ended up choosing um, actually this. We sent this to them as a background color. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. It'll make it pop, but also give that little hint yeah. of the royal. Yeah. Oh, and that's a nice solution because the delta between that purple and this purple is significant. Mm -hmm. And that sort of bridges it. Yeah. No, I'm, I think they made a really good choice with this. This was one of like three options I sent them. And yeah. like, they were like, yeah, we want to, we really want to emphasize the purple part of the story. So uh, uh, tell me about the, the paint on the eagle itself. Um, did you guys do analysis of what kind of paint was used and how is that deteriorating or not deteriorating? 
Yeah, no analysis yet. We did mm -hmm. some solubility testing because before we popped this thing off completely, there are some tricky spots that were still adhered um, mm -hmm. very close to the paint. So um, we wanted to see what the paint was sensitive in, what kind of solvents to see if we could get away with using the same kind of solvent chamber setup to mm -hmm. soften the adhesive that we'd been using around the edges. So unfortunately, it was pretty sensitive and, <laughs> and all the solvents we wanted to use that that worked on the adhesive. But um, other than that, yeah, it's just it's we haven't gotten quite there yet, mm -hmm. but there are some um, we got some tricks up our sleeve to kind of let us know a little bit more about the paint. It's just doing some interesting things. It's certainly stiffening the silk a lot. It's right. kind of wow. already made problems for us and that we were hoping to roll the flag to flip it over. But this is so rigid. Oh, um, and that would you could end up shattering. Exactly. Cracking. Oh, yeah. And, the, and it's Crack. already cracking along. Um, oh, I can't find yeah. one now. There's one down here, I think, where it's like it there's just a break right along one of these leaves right. mm -hmm. where it's just like the stiff paint and the soft silk just don't, that like interface is always a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm curious too about uh, the research that you guys might do into the source material. Like, are you able to isolate which eagle the painter was copying? <laughs> was it on the back of a Confederate bill or, uh. you know, or some other material? Mm -hmm. So Daisy found a stamp on it that the the curators had not found before um, oh. saying who manufactured it. Oh, neat. Yeah, so it's, I think it's that corner. Yeah, we flipped it around. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you get in clo oh, close here, yeah, it's just kind of a wreck. So we can read Cisco Bro, oh. yeah, Cisco, yeah, Cisco Bro, Bro, Baltimore. <laughs> um, Maeve, do you have that printout? I of do. The, yeah, so. Once we lifted this corner, we were super excited. Oh, um, you must have been. Yeah, to see this little stamp because we were kind of guessing, you can see a ghost of it from the front right, right there. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, we had no idea that like double layer of the hem was hiding the rest of the information. But then we told the curator. Yeah, so I like, I emailed um, Mike Kolek, who's the collections <laughs> manager yeah. up at Gettysburg Foundation, because this is a foundation object. And he like immediately sent back this like with a bunch of exclamation points. He was so excited. Dude! Because they thought, like they had just like inferred that this was most likely made by Cisco Brothers, but yeah. they had no proof. So now they have proof, which is always a really exciting um, that thing That is to thrilling. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's some Indiana Jones stuff, peeling up that corner. Yeah, huh? it's, <laughs> those moments are pretty, pretty awesome. I yeah. would imagine, yeah. oh my goodness. That's, I, I, I describe a lot of the research I do as Rumpelstiltskin. I'm just trying to find out the thing's name and then I can break yes. its spell. Yeah, yes. I, yeah that. I can relate to that. Yeah. I mean, it's so rare too that you like come to the end of a research rabbit hole and like have a satisfying yes. conclusion. Yes. So these moments are just like, like, wow, no, that's it. I can yeah. stop Googling now. Really, look at how happy this guy is putting up oh, this flag. Yeah, too. That is fancy like, flag. That is <laughs> it's waving perfectly. Yes. Yeah. Yep. What are the next steps with this? So we've gotten it up, which was like the biggest, scariest yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, and so next, we're going to have a mount um, coming in next week, I think. So we need to upholster the mount, launder the fabric, get that all ready, and then figure out the overlay color exactly, because it's hard to, to get the color exactly right, because I don't have purple all around this right, yet. Right. So it'll be like figuring out overlays, doing some stabilization on like areas like here where it's it's just a little mobile um, mm -hmm. and want it to s stay in one place <laughs> would be good. Um, maybe some underlays under like areas like this where it's just totally lost. I might paint something and put it under there so you have kind of the lines continue and right. we don't have that break. But then it's just, just mounting is the mm -hmm. next thing. And when you say launder the fabric, I'm sure you guys must you have to use detergents and stuff that don't have Mm -hmm. chemicals that off gas in them so they're yeah they we use like kind of the most basic detergent that you can get no brighteners no like scents none of that it's just be like we just want it clean that's it amazing mm -hmm. um that is a thrilling story thank you so <laughs> yeah. much for showing me this. Yeah, this, this is really really cool i love the color treatment and that's so exciting that you found mm -hmm. that amazing yeah also thanks for calling yeah <laughs> <laughs>